Hello, my name is Scott, and I'm with Sullivan County Victim Service Prevention Team. Today we're reading Angry Octopus. The sun's morning light trickled down through the water to the entrance of the cave. An octopus sleeping inside the cave could feel the life energy of the sun touch his face. <clears throat> he took a deep breath and opened his eyes. He stretched his body and ventured outside of his home. Just in front of his cave was a seashell rock garden that he had created. Each morning, he would begin his day by eating breakfast in his special garden as he watched the ocean come alive in the morning sun. This morning, his garden looked different. During the night, lobsters traveling across the ocean floor had bumped into his seashells and rocks. Everything was knocked over and out of order. The octopus was not happy. In fact, he was very angry. The more he looked at the mess, the worse he felt. He got madder and madder, and he felt his body get tighter and tighter. His muscles were tense, and his stomach was rumbling like a volcano. He looked around at his ruined garden, and his face started to turn red with anger. He knew what was happening to him, but he did not know how to stop it. He was so angry that he thought he might explode, and he did. The angry octopus lost his temper, and as he screamed and yelled, he released a purplish-black cloud of ink into the water around him. He felt frustrated and out of control. He didn't feel like he was the boss of his own body or feelings, and now he couldn't see through the dark ink cloud surrounding him. A sea child swimming by the cave saw the cloud of anger and confusion and stopped to speak to the octopus. Why are you so angry? Why are you sitting in a, cloud, a dark cloud on such a beautiful day? The octopus answered that he didn't know why he did this when he got angry. But he did know that it didn't feel good to lose his temper and it always made his problem get worse. The sea child giggled and said, I will show you how to be the boss of your, of your body and your anger. I will show you how to calm down, let go of your anger, and see things more clearly. Lie down on your back and wiggle yourself into a comfortable position. Feel the sand slowly moving slowly around your body as you snuggle in. Now close your eyes and take a deep breath. Breathe in through your nose and let the air out through your mouth. Ah. Now tighten your toes and feet. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Squeeze them into a tight ball. Hold, hold, hold. Ah. Now let the air out, through, out of your mouth and let your toes and feet relax. Surprisingly enough, the octopus felt his toes and feet relax. The sea child continued, tighten your legs tight as you can. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Hold, hold, hold. Ah. Now let the air out of your mouth and let your legs stretch out gently as you let the angry, tight feelings start to slip away. The octopus felt his legs stretch out on the cool sand as he let the angry feelings leave his body. The sea child continued, tighten your hips, stomach, and back. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Hold, hold, hold. Ah. Now let the air out of your mouth and let your back, stomach, and hips melt into the sand beneath you. The octopus felt his body melting into the soft sand beneath him. The rumbling in his stomach became quiet and was now replaced with calm air as he felt his breath move in and out, in and out, in and out. The sea child continued. Tighten the muscles in your chest, your neck, and shoulders. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Hold, hold, hold. Ah! Now let the air out of your mouth 
and feel all that tension in your chest, neck, and shoulders drift away. The octopus felt the tension leave his chest, neck, and shoulders and drift away. The sea child continued. Tighten your arms, hands, and fingers. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Squeeze them into a tight ball. Hold, hold, hold. Ah. Now let the air out of your mouth and let your arms, hands, and fingers unfold. The octopus felt his hands open and the last of his anger flowed away. The sea child continued. Tighten your jaw, your lips, and your nose. Crunch up your whole face. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Hold, 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 ah. Now let the air out of your mouth and let your face and skin soften. The octopus felt his skin soften. The octopus enjoyed how relaxed he felt. He focused on how his breath was moving in and out, in and out, in and out, filling his belly with warm, happy air. He felt relaxed and peaceful. The sea child continued. Tighten and wrinkle the skin on your forehead and the thoughts in your head. Squeeze them as tight as you can. Hold, 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 ah. Now let that air out of your mouth and let your forehead and mind become smooth and clear and still. The octopus stayed very still for the next few moments. He realized that he was now the boss of his own body and feelings. He felt his breath moving in and out, in and out, in and out, touching every cell of his body. He felt good. After a few moments, the octopus opened his eyes. His mood had shifted and the color of his body had returned to a warm shade of brown. He felt calm and balanced and comfortable in his own skin. The dark cloud that had surrounded the octopus was gone. The, every, the ever moving ocean had replaced it with pure blue water. In this calm, still moment, he realized that he could see things more clearly. He realized that he could solve his problem without being angry. With a little help, he could fix his seashell rock garden. The octopus asked the child if she would help him. Together they worked and laughed as they created a new seashell ga rock garden that was more beautiful than anything he ever imagined. Being the boss of his angry feelings helped the octopus make a new friend. Being calm helped him to see new possibilities. It helped him to think clearly. Now, whenever the octopus feels like he's going to explode with anger, he takes a deep breath. Ah! He tells himself that he is the boss of himself. He remembers that being calm helped him fix his garden and make a new friend. He smiles at how much better he feels as he feels his breath move in and out, 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 in and out. So deep breathing is very good for relieving some stress and anger, but sometimes you still wanna throw your very own little fit. So today's activity, Renee is actually gonna show us how to constructively throw our own very little fit. Okay, so what we have here is we're gonna start out with kind of like just a clump of yarn that are about like eight inches long. And then you're gonna have one piece that you pull out of the clump. You need two eyeballs and then you need either white glue or a glue stick to make your own little fit. You're gonna first take your yarn and you're gonna kind of fold it in half. Then you're going to take your string, lay it underneath it. Then you're gonna tie it to kind of make the head of the very little fit. So I'm just gonna do a second knot on here to make sure it stays. So as you can see, that makes like the head of the little fit. Next, I'm going to take my white glue and just put a little dab on each eyeball. Okay. 
and place it on my little fit. Now, obviously with the white glue, it's gonna need some time to dry, but you can see it's very easy to construct. And along with your little fit, you can print out this little card that says your very own little fit. I'm here to help, please don't despair, when your temper's rising and you need a little air. When you feel your blood boiling and you're as mad as you can be, go ahead, pick me up and throw a little fit like me. So instead of you actually throwing a fit or a tantrum where you're throwing toys, you're hitting things, you're stomping around the house, get out your little fit that we made and just give them a little toss around the room. Throw them around a little bit and hopefully it'll get some of that frustration out, make you feel a little bit better. We'll see you all again on Thursday.